So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Member Cafe. Um, I think we're just going to hold just a minute or two. I, I see our numbers ticking up, so we want to give people time to get, get logged in and into our session before we begin. So just hang on there for a minute or two. All right, looks like our login number is holding. So, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Ann Gluff, and I am part of the member engagement team here at Partners Health Management. And we are so glad that you've joined us today. So you can see um, I have a whole crew with me joining, uh, uh, joining you and I today. So we're just gonna take a quick minute if y'all could just share your name and your what you do here at Partners. Uh, so I'm going to just start at the top of my screen the way I see y'all. So, so Beth. Hi, I'm Beth Brooks. I am a member engagement supervisor. It's nice to be here today. And then Lindsay. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lindsay Green, member engagement. I cover the Gaston, Cleveland, Lincolnton, and Rutherford counties. Sasha. Good afternoon, my name is Stacia Bonner and I am a member engagement specialist here at Partners. I cover the Union, Cabarrus, and Stanley County. Thank you. All right, how about you, Kim? Hello, everybody. I'm Kimberly Lambert. I am the bilingual member engagement specialist here at Partners and I cover Cabarrus, Stanley, and Union County. And next, Allison Crotty. Good afternoon. I'm Allison Crotty. I'm the Senior Director of Member Services, which is Partners Access Call Center and Member Engagement. And Danielle? Hi, I'm Danielle Clark. I am Provider and Network Manager over Enrollment and Maintenance. Cindy? <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Cindy Trobaugh, Member Engagement Manager. All right, and then um, how about the three of you at the bottom there, Beth? Start with Beth. Well, and there's three Beths on this call, so you guys are <laughs> really, you know, we're happy to have that. We only hire Beths. Um, Beth Lackey, Senior Director of Provider Network. And I'm Beth Brown, and I am the um, provider, a uh, director, direct, but provider network director of relationships. And if you if you fail to know a name, just say Beth, and one, somebody will answer. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not hey. least, hey, I'm Rachel Jerzak. I'm assistant director of IDD Care Management, which covers all the counties. <laughs> all right. Well, great. Um, so Beth is going to, Beth Brooks of Member Engagement, who is um, doing all of our tech background today, she's going to share our slide deck with us. Um, so today for uh, Member Cafe, we're going to be sharing with you some information about Member Connect, our member port portal, as well as some um, additional information just about partners and about the tailored plan. Um, so I um, wanted to let you know that we are offering this session today in closed caption. Um, so you will either see that um, note at the bottom or top of your screen. And if you don't need the closed caption, you can simply click on the X at the right hand side to turn that off and give you a clear view of your screen. Um, Let's see, what else do I wanna share with you? Before we go forward, let's talk about a little bit of housekeeping. So I wanted to let you know that this session is being recorded. So um, be careful about sharing sensitive personal information. Um, if you do have things that you'd wanna discuss with partner staff, please do reach out to us. And we'd be glad in member engagement to set up some time to work directly with you and have a session with you uh, to answer your questions. Um, <clears throat> the slides, 
uh, everyone always asks, are the slides going to be available? So the answer to that question is we are recording that this and it will be available on our website under the member education tab. Uh, not today, but soon after so that you all can access it or if you want to point someone else to it to get some information. So during our session today, what we'd like to do is go through all of our information and then um, you can, I know questions always come to mind when we're talking, so feel free to put them into the Q&A. So one thing I want to point out about questions is that um, you know, our audience focus today is our members and their families. So, and I, I know that others attend as well, you're always welcome, but wanna make sure that our members and families have the opportunity to get their questions in there first so that we can address their questions. Um, anyone else is welcome to enter questions afterwards. So we appreciate you um, honoring the members and their families to get their questions answered. So enter them in the Q&A. You'll find that chat has been turned off and you won't be able to type into it. However, Kim, who you just met, our bilingual member engagement specialist, she's gonna be entering information for you into the chat. So you can quickly grab it, copy and paste it if you need to, um, if you wanna save it for future use. Um, so I think, I think that's it. When we get to our question and answer period, Beth uh, Brooks is going to moderate our questions. We have a team here that's going to be able to answer. Um, and if you have a question you'd like to ask out loud, you can raise, use the raise your hand tool, but it's the, at the bottom of your screen at that time. And I'll remind you when we get to that time. So uh, Beth, let's go ahead and, and jump right in and move to the next slide. Great, right, just wanted to share a little bit about Partners Health Management. I know many of you are very familiar with us, but just in case you're not. Um, so our official name is Partners Health Management. Uh, we typically go by partners. Um, we are really proud to say that we are a member care organization uh, and we're a health plan, kind of like an insurance plan. Uh, we um, manage Medicaid dollars and state funded dollars. So you want to think of partners as part government agency and part insurance company. So again, when you think about an insurance company, partners doesn't provide direct treatment to our members and uh, individuals. We have a network of providers to um, deliver services and treatment to our members, uh, Medicaid members and state funded recipients. <clears throat> um, all right, let's go ahead and go on to the next slide. So Partners is a member, uh, member care organization. We're, always, we're also a managed care organization. Sometimes people call us an LME MCO, Local Management Entity Member Care Organization. These are the counties we serve. We cover 14 counties. Not gonna read them all for you. You can see them right there on your screen, but that's the area that we cover to manage those dollars, we also provide education and information and support to our members and recipients. And as we move on to the next slide, I am going to pass um, the baton over to Sasha Bonner. She is going to share some information about Taylor Plan. Hello again, everyone. Um, good afternoon. I'm going to go over Taylor's plan and some um, important information for you to know, as well as some dates. I want to stop my camera for a second, just so I can um, focus on, so you guys can focus on the um, slides. Give me one moment. Can you all hear me well? Yep. Okay. What is Taylor plan? That's the question of the hour. Um, Partner Taylor plan will manage behavioral health, physical health, pharmacy and care management services for individuals who may have intellectual developmental disabilities, traumatic brain injury, significant mental health needs, or severe substance use disorders. All six current LME slash MTOs will manage Taylor Plan across North Carolina. Taylor Plans will serve both uninsured and underinsured recipients who may be eligible for state-funded behavioral health services and support. Some members with certain types of insurance and waivers will remain in the, in the NT Medicaid direct program, 
with the LME's MTOs, and their medical care will remain as is prior to April 1st, 2023. Next slide, please. The North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services has delayed the implementation of behavioral health and intellectual development of disabilities, tailored plans, until April 1st, 2023. This decision was unanimously supported by the leadership of the state's six local management entities slash managed care organizations. The delayed start of tailored plan allows LMEs and MCOs, which will operate the tailored plans more time to contract to expand their provider networks to support members' choice and to validate the data systems that the data systems are working appropriately. Tailored plans are now scheduled to launch April 1st, 2023. We'll provide specialized services for individuals with significant behavioral health conditions, intellectual developmental disabilities, and traumatic brain injuries, as well as physical health and pharmacy services. Partners members who will be eligible for the Taylor Plan will continue to receive their behavioral health services and IDD and TBI supports through partners and their physical health and pharmacy services through NC Medicaid Direct, just as they do today. Next slide. Thank you. Let's take a look. This is transitioning to Taylor Plan, and this is a, um, a draft timeline. Let's take a look at it together. And this is what the state has shared. As mentioned on a previous slide, the tailored plan rollout date was changed to April 1st, 2023. Some dates will look the same, while the start of tailored plans will be delayed. Specific new services will still go live December 1st. NCDHHS and the LMEs, MTOs, will support providers of tailored care management to launch their services on December 1st. What does that mean? Individuals currently in Medicaid Direct who are eligible will be able to receive tailored care management. Through tailored care management, members will have a designated care manager supported by the multidisciplinary team to provide integrated care management that addresses the member's whole person health needs. The timeline notes the rollout for the 1915I option also beginning December 1st, 2022. Now, this is pending approval from the Centers of Medicaid and Medicare. The 1915I option will provide alternative services to the current 1915B3 service array. If you currently are receiving B3 services, they can and will continue through March 31st or whenever the authorization is set to end to prior to March 30th, 2023. This program provides services to help members remain in their homes and community-based settings through services such as respite, individual and transitional support, community living and support, community transitions, and supported employment. During the choice period that begins on August 15, 2022, Medicaid beneficiaries eligible for a tailored plan are choosing or have chosen primary care providers, PCPs, and the tailored care management provider. The current choice period ends October 14th. With the, launch, with the launch delay, there will be a new choice period from January 15th through February 15th of 2023. If you have already contacted partners and made your choice, you do not have to do it again. And there has been, have been um, members who have contracted, contacted their care management as well as our access department, as well as member engagement. So if you have done any of those things and have identified your TCP or your TCM, you will not have to do it again. We wanna save you that, that call. So what happens if you do not choose a PCP and tailored care management provider? Well, you will be assigned a PCP based on past history in the tailored care management agency. Beneficiaries will begin receiving health care services from Taylor Plan on April 1st, 2022. There are many decisions that are being made and the information is changing daily. We will continue to update you on those changes as we are informed. Next slide, please. Oh, there we go. So here's a little bit more information about Taylor Plan choice period. Again, with the, the delay in the launch of Taylor Plans, 
The choice period for tailor care management choice has been extended for a week to 10 days. Auto assignment will begin at the end of the month for TCM only. If you have not made a choice for TCM during this time, you will be assigned a tailor care management agency, but you still have the option to make a change following the auto assignment if you wish. Tailor care management begins on December 1st, 2022. Primary care physicians can or providers can be chosen through this initial time period. This delay enables us to continue to expand our network of physical health providers. If you have already contacted partners and made that choice, you do not have to do it again. Beneficiaries should contact their tailored plan to choose a primary care provider or PCP or to choose tailored care management entity or TCM. Beneficiaries should contact the enrollment broker to choose a different health plan or for, choose, for the choice of counseling. A PCP is a licensed healthcare practitioner who sees people that have common medical problems. This person is most often a doctor. However, a PCP may be a physician, a physician assistant, a nurse or a nurse practitioner, or a specialist who agrees to be the PCP. Most tailored care plan members will be eligible for care management. Individuals and families will have a choice in who provides their care management. They can choose a care management agency, an advanced medical home plus, or the tailored plan, and that would be us partners. Members will be assigned a PCP and TCM based on, their, on the location and past services if they do not contact partners or the other MTOs during this choice period. And that is it for me. All right, well, thanks, Sasha. Um, so now we are going to take a look at Member Connect. Member Connect is our member portal. And what I am gonna do at this point is do a live demo for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so I can um, kind of give you a feel um, for what it's like to walk through the portal. Um, so if someone can just give me a thumbs up, I, let's see who I can see here. Sasha, can you give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen share? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So um, this is the main page to um, Partners Tailored Plan website to open Member Connect, our member portal. You simply go to this upper right here and click on member connect. Next, you're going to see this pop up block. If you don't have an account already, you can create an account. So who can log into member connect? Um, you must be a member or a guardian and you have someone in your family or a representative um, of the individual can open that account as well. <clears throat> Once you hit uh, click on create account. You're going to be asked for the member's information. You're going to enter the member's name. Um, and then you can open up the account using their Medicaid ID or their date of birth and uh, social security number. So just be prepared. Uh, you may also use your member ID if you know your partner's member ID. So just be prepared and have that information when you are ready to create your account. You only have to do that once. Once you're all set up, then you can uh, simply log in. You can see here that it's saved my username and my password. So I'm going to click on log in to open up um, the portal. What I want to share with you is what you're seeing on the screen is actually my son's account. So my son is a recipient of the Innovations Waiver. Um, so I am going to show you um, how to walk through the member portal and what how it can benefit you. So if we start from the top of the screen, one of the first things I wanted to share with you is that you can switch from English to Spanish or back again. So if you're a Spanish speaking family or you have someone on your caseload or know someone who's Spanish speaking, you wanna assure them that they can in fact 
um, sign up for the Member Connect and they will be able to view this completely in Spanish. So just by clicking right there, you can see that everything on the screen has switched over to Spanish, excuse me, Spanish, not Spanglish, Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, so if I just click on English again, it's going to take me right back into English because I myself am, am not fluent in Spanish. All right, so that's at the top. So if we step down to this top part next to the partners local, you see home, tailored plan, contact, and messages. So home is just gonna do just that. When you're anywhere else on the portal and you wanna get back to the screen, you can click on home. Tailored plan, that's gonna take you to the tailored plan partners website, right where we just came from. Clicking on contact, is gonna show you a list of contacts within partners. Um, so information about asking a question about an appeal, or if you wanted to contact the claims department for an example. So a lot of different phone numbers here for you to access, just a quick, easy way to uh, get to this information. So I am gonna go ahead and return back to uh, where I was before. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go, it actually opened up a separate tab when it took me there. So I'm gonna go back to a tab that says Health Trio Connect. And that's where Member Connect is. So you just simply click on that tab to go back. Messages, this is where you can uh, send a message directly to partners. It's very, very similar to an email. Um, and this message, uh, when you send it, is gonna go to um, the member portal administrator. It actually comes here to member engagement. And what we're gonna do here is either answer your question or get it to get the message to the individual you're looking for directly, or reach out to another team that can help answer the question. So you can see here, very simple to operate. If you want to send a new message, you're going to click on new message. And down below, it's very much like a, <clears throat> a typical email box. When you send a message in, you're going to get an automatic response saying it's been received and it does pop into our inbox and we, were, we are going to respond to that very quickly. So just wanted to show you what the messages look like. So once I'm on my message screen here in the member portal, I can do one of two things. I can go back to the home screen, clicking here, or I can also use this menu right here, which I'm gonna go over with you now. So just gonna go ahead and go back to the home screen. I like to go back to that home base um, so I can view everything. So our first option here is My Health. And you can see I have a document manager, I have care plan details and an example, and then state funded services. So I wanna show you the document manager. So as a member, a Medicaid member or a state funded recipient, you may have documents that have been uploaded into the system, perhaps by a care manager or someone else. So you can see here that, that some documents have been uploaded for my son, Eric. Um, these are documents that we can see, we can view them here. You can see right down here to the right, uh, you have the option to download them. You can save them to your to your computer. You can print them out, um, or you can just view them here uh, simply by clicking on the document. So super simple. It's just a list of documents, and it can fill up to a certain number of documents, and you'll be able to flip through pages if you do have that many documents. So My Health Document Manager. The next thing that I wanted to quick show you is a care plan detail. Um, so this is a set of slides that's gonna walk you through what a care plan is. A care plan is what the tailored care manager is going to uh, work on with you to develop the care plan to support your son, daughter, yourself, the individual. So that's what a care plan is and you will be able to do that here. And so that care plan would be separate from, uh, let's say an, an ISP or an individual support plan. So it's something that kind of encompasses everything together to support the individual. 
So from here, I am going to go back to um, the My Documents screen. And again, if I wanted to go back to the home screen, I can simply click here, return to the home screen, or I could have selected from the blue banner where I wanted to go. The other items here under My Health are a care plan example. So that's going to show you a care plan that's been completed or filled out. And state funded services. Clicking here is going to take you to our partner's website to share more information about uh, state funded services for our state funded recipients. So moving on to my health plan, here you can see that you can take a look at your benefits and eligibility, um, information about claims. So let, let's talk about, before I go into that, let's talk about benefits and eligibility. I'm not going to open that uh, because that is private information. Um, and so what it shows you is shows you your current address, which is really important to know because it is super important that you keep in contact with us and make sure that we have that up to date. And also even more important is for you, um, those who have Medicaid, to contact our local Department of Social Services. Uh, and I'm gonna show you on here where you can actually um, find your information to contact your Department of Social Services because you wanna keep them up to date. They are the keeper of the information for Medicaid, and they often send out uh, notices that you're going to want to be aware of. So it's really important to keep that information up to date. So it not only shows you that under benefits and eligibility, it's going to show you your Medicaid ID, your partner's member ID, uh, your date of birth. It's going to show your, um, your health plan and your start and your end dates there. So great information to know. Your claim status, um, in order to get information on your claims, you do have to give us a phone call. So it's going to show you the phone number, so our claims team. You also saw that under the contact list that we just looked at. So one of the great things about our member portal is you can get the information in different areas. So it's whatever is most convenient to you to click on. So super member friendly. <clears throat> the care management comprehensive assessment. I'm just gonna click on that quickly. Um, and the reason I wanna show you this is this is something that as we move into tailored care management, our care managers are gonna be utilizing. So this is an extensive, um, as it says, comprehensive assessment. It has several questions. Um, it is several pages long. Uh, it includes um, anything from your, your basic mailing address uh, to, you know, clinical information to that social information about, um, about housing and food and uh, whether you feel safe, um, just all kinds of information. That's, and this information is really going to drive your care plan and how your tailored care manager works together with you. So this is a great tool to just take a look at so you know what to expect as a member. All right, so again, I'm gonna go right back to where we were by clicking on my Health Trio tab. All right, here is, I mentioned that you can, it's really important to change your contact information. And so, so what it hmm, did not go to where I expected it to go to. One thing I do want to tell you about our um, member portal is we are continually updating it and um, making it better and easier for you to access. Uh, I'm a, there's another location actually where I can show you where the DSS information is. And this down here is a social determinants of health um, assessment. And if you are not familiar with that terminology, social determinants of health um, focuses on all of those things outside of your actual health care. It's your housing, your food. Um, again, I mentioned before, whether you feel safe, those are all things that affect your ability to, to actually um, take part in treatment. So it's really important for your care manager and for all of us, for yourself to be aware of of those um, of that information. All right, so we did my health, my health plans. Let's go over to my resources. 
nice long list here. Certainly not going to go through everything here. But you can see it starts out with Aunt Bertha. And Aunt Bertha is a place that you can go online. It's also called findhealth.org. And it's a great place to find resources. Um, and so what I do want to point out here, um, HealthWise Knowledge Base. Um, this eventually and very soon, we are going to have um, a connection with a vendor that's going to share educational materials with us. You'll be able to go into here and search for particular health conditions. So perhaps someone in your family or it's yourself that has a, a heart condition, you're going to be able to pop right in there and pull some information out, educational, educate yourself about your condition. The other thing you'll find in here is for those of you who either have um, members um, that you serve that are on the innovations waiver, this is information about the SIS supports intensity scale that all those on the innovations waiver need to have that assessment done. And this is the respondent handbook. There's one for an adult and one for a child. Information here about uh, filing an appeal, an ISP tailored plan template, gonna give you some information there. Um, let's see, and as we scroll down, we have rights and responsibilities. This is going to take you to the location on our, excuse me, I need to move something out of my way here, on our website um, that's going to share information about rights and responsibilities. <clears throat> Medicaid ID replacement card. Once we go live with the tailored plan, we will be managing your Medicaid IDs here from uh, partners. But right now, if you needed to make a change, for your Medicaid ID, you would want to contact your local DSS. So that's really what it tells you here. Um, you can see partners will mail tailored plan Medicaid cards to all members in November. This is the information that just changed. So since we are not going live till April 1st, 2023, this information will be updated here as well. If you wanted to locate the phone number, the contact information for your DSS, your local DSS in your county, this is where you would click. It's going to take you to a map, it's going to take you right to a directory. Super easy way to find the information that you need. And of course, you can also contact us here at Partners and Member Services if you have any questions. So again, returning back to the member portal, I'm going to that tab at the top of my screen that says Health Trio. So from here, uh, my preferences, this is just where you change your password and you're gonna indicate communication preferences, your email address, et cetera, there. All right, so that's our blue banner menu. Let's now take a look at the meat of what you see on the screen. Um, we do have some phone numbers noticed, uh, notices here, experiencing behavioral health problems. Notes our phone number that you can give us a call. You can see um, latest news. You can click here for additional information. Here it says tailored plan implement. That word's not coming out well for me today. Tailored plan implementation delayed until April 1st. All right, the next thing I wanna show you is quick links. So I know a lot of you probably use other websites and applications, and a lot of times you can click in different places to get to the same information. So that is true here with the member portal. So these are quick links. Some of these quick links can also be accessed up here. For example, messages is here. It's also down here. It says private messenger health team. It takes you to the same place. Um, and some of your links here will take you to some of the same places as you see up here. Um, so here's updating your contact information, what I was just talking about. So again, super important to keep that up to date. So let me show you this, tailored care management choice. And then we also have change your primary care provider or your PCP. So if you click on either one of these links, it's going to take you to a form. This is another way that you can enter your choice into partners. Uh, you, can all, you can make that phone call and call our main number, 888-235-4673. Talk to one of our uh, customer service reps and access, and they can absolutely help you with that. 
You can also call the member engagement team. You're gonna hear a little bit more about member engagement in a few minutes. Uh, but you can complete this form. And it is going to, uh, it's gonna ask you for your basic information here. Can ask if you have already have a, a primary care provider or not. Um, and based on how you answer these, it's going to give you different fields to fill out. So, for example, it says, do you currently have a PCP? If I say yes, it's going to give me some additional fields. So we want to know, you know, who's your current PCP? And then uh, to help us get you to the right uh, place and make sure that your Medicaid card has the right information on it. And uh, again, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it goes from there. It's going to grab your signature. When you're done with the form, you're going to scroll down to the bottom and you are going to click on submit. Once you hit that submit, you're going to see another screen come up and it's going to show you your completed form. That screen, you can take a screenshot of it and save it uh, to your computer if you wish. And so that's your confirmation that yes, we have received your form and we're going to take it from there and um, enter the information into our system and make sure that it gets to the right place. So back to our member portal screen, um, there is also a form similar to that, works just in the very same manner for your tailored care management choice. Um, and I think that's all I'm going to show you here on quick links. I really encourage you to, to peruse this screen yourself and get signed up for it. Um, here you can take a health screening. Um, simply by clicking on the green button here, it's going to take you to our website where we have self-assessments and health screenings. Uh, it's just a great way to capture how you're feeling and see if you might need some support and assistance. And maybe you feel like you do. So maybe this assessment is going to help you get there. Down at the bottom, we have three blocks here. To the left, stay connected. This is a great way to stay connected with partners. You want to stay in tune with what's going on. You simply click on subscribe now you're going to be able to select what kind of emails and information that you want to see, receive newsletters and updates from partners. In the center, find a provider. You can click here and you can search for your primary care provider or your um, behavioral health care providers. I do want to let you know that when you go into our find, find the provider, uh, you will not, with the healthcare providers, we are diligently working on this every day, getting this up to date. You may not find your healthcare provider in here, uh, but we, again, we are working hard on this and we have many providers that are either in negotiation or under contract with us for on that healthcare side of things. Um, so if you don't see your provider in here, don't be um, overly concerned, but do feel free to give us a call so that we can let you know what the status of that is. And over here to the right are some more resources. These links take you to our website, directly to uh, the location, shares with you how to get services, directly to the member handbook or the recipient, the state funded recipient handbook. Also can take you directly to grievances and appeals. So member connect. It's just uh, an easy way to peruse uh, our website, actually, because you can um, pick your topic here. It's just a different way to look at our website. It's a way for you to communicate with partners, the staff here at Partners. It is a way for you to share information with us, whether it's to change your address or it's to choose your, your primary care provider or maybe make a change. Same thing with your tailored care management. So a lot of different opportunities. And I want you to look to this as something that's going to change and continue to get better and provide more information to you. So I am going to stop sharing my screen. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and pull that slide deck back up. Um, and I bet at this point, you might be tired of hearing my voice. So Lindsay Green is going to take it from here and share with you about starting with transition of care. But before she starts, I want to just give you a quick reminder. If you have questions coming up, drop them into the Q&A as we're moving along um, so that we can go ahead and address those um, before we finish up. 
And um, okay, take it away, Lindsay. Okay, thank you, Ann. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I am going to start off sharing some information about our transition of care. With the North Carolina Medicaid Managed Care, individuals can move between plans based on some of the primary following reasons. A change in the member's service needs, a change in the county of the residents, or change in the Medicaid status. Members or providers can request to change health plans by going to the North Carolina Medicaid Enrollment Broker site, which is ncmedicaidplans.gov backslash submit forms online or by calling 833-870-5500. Next slide, please. For more details on the information we have shared so far, you can contact your health plan. You can call the number on your Medicaid ID card. You can visit the North Carolina DHHS website. Um, and I think um, Kimberly will be putting those in our chat for us. And you can also call the North Carolina Medicaid Enrollment Broker at 1-888, excuse me, 1-833-870-5500. Or you can call the North Carolina Medicaid Contact Center at 1-888-245-0179. Next slide. The member engagement team here at Partners provide customer service, <clears throat> excuse me, as an extension of our Partners Access Call Center. We support member empowerment initiatives that offer resources, education, and navigations of North Carolina public behavioral health and IDD healthcare system. You will often find us in your community at events sharing information and education about services you may need. Our staff here at Partners is dedicated to building strong partnerships with our internal staff, our providers, and other groups in the community. The member engagement staff work together with individuals and families in agencies in our community that directly support them. Next slide. Member engagement brings the member's voice into Partners Health Management to make needed changes. You can reach out to member engagement by phone at 704-884-2729 or by email at memberquestions at partnersbhm.org for any questions that you may have. We provide information about community resources, the types of services, your rights as a member, and as always, you can find us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Next slide, please. The PIX Health mobile app can help you monitor physical and behavioral health. We encourage our members to register for the PIX Health phone app. You can download this app to your mobile device by going to www.highpix.com. This app enables you to interact with Pixar, which is a sweet chat box that can help you access resources and give you helpful tips to live a healthier life. The Pix Health app focuses mainly on daily moods, uh, wellness check-ins, screenings for depression, anxiety, and loneliness. Through your interactions with the app and the Compassionate Call Center, Pix will send referrals back to partners to, for us to follow up with our members or to keep our care managers in the loop. You will also find re research-based games and activities inside the app, which promote good behavior health. Now we're going to watch a short video clip about PICS and then we'll turn it back over to Ann. Because everyone can use a little extra support, our compassionate staff and simple app are unbeatable companions to connect you to the right care in the right moment. You get unlimited toll-free calls to our certified staff when PIX Health is provided as a health plan benefit. Our friendly and knowledgeable people listen with understanding, connecting you to resources for your physical and mental health needs, like where to find doctors and support groups, or get things like transportation, food, or diaper services. They help you make the most of your health insurance and give empowering support and encouragement. 
Making your health a priority can be hard at times, but our friendly team is here to make it easier. Together with our Always On app, it's easy to stay connected and feel healthy and happy. Night or day, get free access to community and health resources and explore ways to boost positive well-being inside and out. Chat with Pixer, our friendly chatbot for humor and uplifting inspiration. Set reminders to stay on track with medications and wellness activities and keep balanced with calming exercises or captivating games. No smartphone? No problem. If your health insurance plan provides our program as a benefit, we'll support you over the phone to make sure you get the help you need and feel more confident about your next steps. You're not alone. Let the power of Pix Health's companionship make life easier. Call us to sign up or download the app today. Okay, we'll turn it back over to Ann. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, all right, so uh, Pix Health, that is just a great app. All right, so let me uh, let me go ahead and switch gears a little bit. I just have a few more things for you before we get to our uh, Q and A period. Um, so, just want to remind you, uh, as a member or recipient receiving services, or maybe you're a family member, um, if you're receiving services, just remember that your provider is always your first line of call in a crisis. So if you are having a crisis, need some support, you want to reach out to your provider first. Uh, if you have a care manager that's been assigned to you by partners, your care manager is someone that you're going to want to reach out to. Um, if you're not in services right now and you have general questions about anything around services or what partners offers, you want to call member engagement. You can call us at 704-884-2729. Lindsay shared a little bit of information about what we do in member engagement. Um, you can do that, or you can send an email to memberquestions at partnersbhm.org. Um, from there, we will connect with you. And of course, always, if you have any questions or concerns, you can call partners at the, the our main number at 888-235-HOPE. Four six seven three, And so I just wanted to share a little bit of information about um, CFAC, our Consumer and Family Ad Advisory Committee. Many of you may be very familiar with it, but if you're not, it is a volunteer group made up of members and family members representing those who receive services. Um, <clears throat> so it is made up of of uh, family members uh, who have someone in their family or they themselves have uh, mental health diagnosis or disorder, substance use disorder, traumatic brain injury, uh, intellectual and developmental disabilities. So CFAC, they advocate on behalf of all of our individuals that we support. Um, and their role is to provide comment and response and to improve our public behavioral health system. Um, so we're looking for members for the Partners CFAC. So if you're interested in becoming a member, you can send an email to CFAC at partnersbhm.org, or you can call member engagement at 704-884-2729, and we'll get you to the right place. You can also reach out to Cindy Troba. Uh, Cindy's our member engagement manager. She's also our member committee liaison. Um, and her phone number is right there um, on the screen for you. So she can answer any questions you might have about CFAC. There's also a link right there on the screen uh, that Kim is probably gonna drop in the chat for you. So if you have questions about CFAC, wanna learn a little bit more, just click on that link and um, you'll get more information. All right, so last but not least, I get, again, just want to reiterate, so stay in touch with us. Um, we may need to contact you about your health plan. Medicaid may need to contact you. So you want to make sure that we at Partners have your address, your phone number. Um, and also, you want to make sure the Department of Social Services has it as well, because they share very important information. And um, there's our phone number right there on the screen for you. Again, it's 1-888-235-HOPE or 4673. 
All right, so now um, we are getting to that time where we're going to switch over to um, questions. Um, so let's go ahead and um, switch right over to questions. So Beth, do you have anything for us? I do. The first question is, for those who are on the innovations waiver, do they have to select a care manager with tailored plan or will they automatically stay with their current care manager? And I'm gonna point that to Rachel. Hey everybody. Um, so if you currently are assigned a care manager for the member that is on the innovations waiver, um, you do not have to select a care manager with tailored plan. The choice period that we're talking about right now is specific to choosing a tailored care management entity, not necessarily an individual care manager. So right now our care managers are working really diligently and reaching out to all of their assigned members on the innovations waiver to provide that choice to members and their legally responsible persons. Um, because now as of December 1st, you'll have a choice of who you receive your tailored care management from. So you can either choose partners who provides tailored care management, or you can select one of the external agencies that provide tailored care management um, to do that for you as of December 1st. So making that choice is really important. Um, I do want to say that although letters have gone out and it, it states that the choice period ends on October 14th or 15th, I believe, um, people can make those changes at any time. Um, so even if you selected one agency to provide your tailored care management and then you changed your mind and you wanted to change it again, um, there's opportunity to make those changes. So just always keep your currently assigned care manager up to date and they'll enter those choices for you and we'll go from there. Thank you, Rachel. Okay, next question is, what is the difference between member services and access to care? Okay, I can answer that one, Beth. Um, so member services is basically a business unit um, within partners and partners access is what we're calling um, our call center. Um, that is more of the service line within that business unit. Um, and member engagement is another um, business line within that unit. Thank you. I have another related question. Um, it's the 1-888-235-4673 is the direct line for mobile crisis. Is the direct line for mobile crisis through Daymark, or is the number for folks to call to engage with basic level of support? Okay, so currently um, that number is where all of our service lines are going until the state has us separating some of the operational um, lines that will be working uh, for Taylor Plan. So right now, um, you will call that number and there'll be a licensed clinician as needed. And then there'll be the qualified professional level for information, um, referral, uh, navigation, that type of thing. So later we will have separate lines with separate um, time frames, but right now we're open 24 seven for all of the, for, um, for urgent needs or for crisis, um, as well as just for general questions. Um, and then the provider line is also being supported through that number, but it's a separate line. And Beth can tell you more about that. <laughs> hey, I think she means Beth Lackey. So I meant Beth Lackey. Beth no Brooks, <laughs> I got this one. Um, so we do have a number for providers 
to call that is um, also a published number. Um, it's called our Partners Provider Support Line so that providers who may have questions um, can uh, call that number, call that line. It operates uh, Monday through Saturday um, so that we're able to support our providers. That number is one 877 398 Four one four five, but that is for providers. So if any providers are on the um, phone, then you have that opportunity to call the provider support line. Also for providers who may be listening in today or on um, this session, we have um, for our current network. This is for the behavioral health network or innovations network or our substance use providers, we have them assigned in Beth Brown's uh, unit to provider account specialists, and they can also always reach out to their provider account specialist. Um, for the physical health, um, any questions or um, anything that you might have, the provider support line is where we want you all to send those questions. Thank you, Beth Lackey. Um, our next question is, can a family member from Catawba County join CFAC? In the past, there was not an opening for Catawba family members. So, Cindy, I'm going to pass this one to you. Yes, thank you, uh, Beth. Um, for whoever's asking that question, please reach out to me. I have a list of all the counties and uh, the vacancies under uh, what uh, vacancy there is for each of the counties. We do have um, across many of the 14 counties a need right now for representation for traumatic brain injury, but we also have some openings across the counties for uh, mental health representation, substance uh, use disorder, and those representing um, the intellectual and developmental disabilities. And I will quickly um, go pull up my vacancy list and hopefully have an answer about Catawba County specifically before the end of this call. So thank you. If you'll give me a minute, I'll get back to you about Catawba County. Thank yeah. you, Cindy. And we certainly invite everybody to attend our meetings. Um, so encourage you to do that. Attend the meetings, even if you're not a member or, um, and, and, uh, there can be a lot of benefit from that, as well as supporting others by doing that. Thank you, Allison. So the next question is, so are we no longer using Daymark for mobile crisis? So I believe that's related to the earlier question about is 888-235-4673 the direct line for mobile crisis run through Daymark. So for mobile crisis providers, um, any of our members can, if they're in crisis, call our crisis line 24-7, and if um, mobile crisis needs to be dispatched, um, that can happen from there, mm -hmm. but there are other ways to access mobile crisis, mm -hmm. so that number is not just for mobile crisis. Mm -hmm. I'm not, please ask a follow-up question, and Beth might want to Beth Lackey might want to add to that. Sure. Um, I think one of the things that has been experienced in um, other ways in which mobile crisis is managed um, is that some times the provider may advertise their own line or they manage that differently for some of our peer um, other LME MCOs. So partners, um, as Allison Crotty indicated, manages that through our centralized call center to then be able to look at that crisis, have the member contact that one number, and then be able to dispatch mobile crisis so that we're able to capture um, those calls. We're able to work with providers. And we actually, in our 14 counties, we have three mobile crisis providers that cover those 14 counties. So we dispatch in that way. Others have done it differently through the years. So that's probably where some of the confusion is, but partners has maintained that centralized 
call center number as Allison indicated so that we can then dispatch appropriately. Thank you all. Okay, Cindy. Trying to get off mute. Um, yeah, I looked at the vacancy list and Catawba County um, for CFAC has an opening uh, for representation under uh, traumatic brain injury. That is our vacancy right now. But as Allison said, please join us for uh, meetings as our guest if you have interest. We also have a number of other advisory uh, committees where you can get involved other than CFAC. So please reach out to me um, and I can share some information on um, other uh, options for you to get involved and have a voice. So thank you. Okay, the next question is, when does CFAC meet? Uh, thank you again for another CFAC question. I'm glad to see there's some interest because we'd love to have you join us. We meet the second Monday of every month year round, except usually for July and December. And the meetings are in the evening from 6 to 8 p.m. And you're having them virtually right now, correct? Thank you, Beth. Yes, they are being held virtually right now. That's true. So there are no more questions in the queue. So Ann, I'm going to pass it back over to you. All right. Well, great. Um, great questions, great information being shared. So I just kind of wanted to give you a recap of, of our new information. Um, you know, everyone, it, I think you're all aware of the delay. So the new date for uh, Taylor Plain rollout is April 1st, 2023. Um, our choice period the current choice period that we're in, it ends October 14th, um, but that is going to be extended about a week to 10 days for tailored care management choice um, before they do some auto assignment. But again, as Rachel mentioned earlier, you know, if you choose a care manager or care management entity, not a care manager, um, and you're not super pleased, you wanna make a change, you, all, you have the option to do that. So, so no worries there. Um, uh, you can make your PCP selection, um, can continue to do that right now through October 14th. And then we're going to have an additional choice period. So the state's given an additional choice period between January 15th and February 14th, where you can select your PCP. Again, the state has let everybody know that the, the reason behind the, the push out is to give us uh, much more time to expand our networks, include all those docs and PAs and nurse practitioners and specialists so that we can reach out to them and um, encourage them to join our network. Um, also want to let you know, to keep your eyes on your mailbox. You all will be, uh, those of you who got letters about tailored plan from the state, you're going to be receiving a new letter uh, very soon from what I understand but there'll be additional notices as we move forward here. So just, like I said, keep your address up to date, super important and keep your eyes peeled for uh, those types of letters that come in your mailbox. Um, and last but not least, um, November Member Cafe uh, will be um, <clears throat> moving forward and continuing to talk more about tailored plan and uh, additional changes. So we're gonna be giving more updates. Uh, we'll also be having a virtual series that's going to be starting um, later in the year. Again, we've moved those dates a little bit, so I can't give an exact date at the moment, but um, it's going to be towards the end of the year, maybe not till January. We're going to have a virtual education series about many components of the tailored plan, and we really hope that you're going to be joining us for that. So keep your eyes open for that. You'll be hearing from us about that you know, via email and uh, different ways it'll be promoted. So thank you so much again for spending this hour with us. We hope it's been informative to you. And I want to give a great thank you to everyone here on the screen with me, especially to our subject matter experts that have been here to answer your questions. So thanks, y'all. And y'all have a wonderful afternoon. So bye-bye now.